related changes in dimensions and how they affect the area and volume. These are the kind of problems where it asks if you double one side or if you double all the sides, what happens to the area or the volume? We're going to do a lot of exploration, so this may go a little long, and it's kind of a difficult topic, so hang in there. If you start with a cube, it only has one measurement, but it has it everywhere. So we've got this side by this side makes the base, and then the height is the same. Well, what happens if I double one of those? Okay, so now it looks more like this with two S in the bottom, but the other measurements are still the same. So the depth is still S, the height is still S. Well, the volume for this one is just S to the third power. So if I double one side, what happens to the volume now? Well, I've got two S times S times S, which is two S to the third power. Well, here's my previous volume it has doubled, okay? So when I doubled one side, it doubled the volume. Well, what would happen if I doubled two sides? Okay, this time I'm not gonna draw it, I'm just gonna write out the dimensions. So I've got two S on two of the sides, and then S for one of the sides. So the volume altogether would be two to the second power, S to the third power, or four S to the third power, okay? So here's my original volume when everything was S. This is now four times as big, okay? So now what happens when we double all the sides? Well, basically we have two S on every side to the third power, which is like two to the third, S to the third, or eight S to the third power. So if you double all the sides of a cube, it turns out that the volume gets multiplied by eight. Interesting, right? So here's that question you're gonna see in the homework. When you double all the sides, does it double the volume? The answer is no. If you double all the sides, it actually multiplies the volume by eight. Well, that's interesting. Let's consider circles. Okay, the area formula for circles is pi r squared. Right? Let's triple that radius and see what happens. Okay, so my new area, let's call it area three, is pi times three times the radius squared, which is equal to pi times nine times r squared, or nine pi r squared. Now the original area was pi r squared when radius was just r. Now that we've tripled the radius, look at this. The area has been multiplied by nine, which is like three to the second power. So we only changed radius, but it changed it by nine instead of by three. Interesting. Keep that in mind as we explore some other shapes and see if you can see an underlying pattern. Okay, it's all about dimensions. So first let's look at areas. Areas are two-dimensional because they have two dimensions. And you might not have thought about it before, but let's look at all these shapes and identify the two dimensions. These are the things you multiply together that are variables, not constants. So for rectangles, we have length times width or base times height, okay? Those are the two dimensions that make that a two-dimensional figure. They can be the same and it would be a square. Okay, how about a parallelogram? Here we go. We have a base again and the height. Okay, so base and height are the two dimensions of a parallelogram as well. And here's a triangle. Again, we have a base and a height and they get multiplied by each other in the formula. Consider this. In this formula, when you multiply these three things, this one is a constant. It is not a dimension. These are the dimensions of the triangle. Okay, how about a circle? It's a two-dimensional figure, right? So let's find the two dimensions. All right, well usually we identify the radius and the formula is pi times the radius square. So think about this. 
What two dimensions are we multiplying together to get the area? Well, pi is a constant term, so it doesn't count. Even though it looks like a variable, it's a number. R squared is where the other two dimensions are, because really, this is pi times r times r. So it turns out that instead of doing something like height times base, we're doing radius times radius. And so the radius represents two dimensions, not one. So when you do something to the radius, you're doing it twice in the formula. And that has something to do with, on the previous slide, why when we changed the radius, we weren't really changing one dimension, we were changing two dimensions. And that's why the area got multiplied by three times three. So it was nine times as big. What about dimensions for solids or 3D figures? Well, for a cube, the formula for volume is side times side times side. So those are the three dimensions. For a square pyramid, what we do is remember area of the base, which would be side times side, and then the height of the pyramid, h, and times one third. Okay, well, one third is a constant term, so the three dimensions are side, side, and height. Cone, we've got area of the base, which is a circle, so we've got pi r squared, and then we multiply that by the height, and the whole thing is multiplied by one third. One third is a constant, and so is pi. So our three dimensions are r, r, and h. Okay, volume of a sphere we haven't talked about much, but the formula is 4 thirds pi r cubed. So what are the three dimensions? Well, 4 thirds isn't a dimension, it's a constant. Pi is a constant term also. So here's where the three dimensions are. Radius, radius, radius. All right. So here's what's going on behind the scenes. If we change one dimension, let's say multiply it by two, we call that doubling, right? Don't be confused by this word. If you double the height, that means times two, right? If it's only the height, that means only one dimension has changed, okay? So like we could change the height or the base or the radius, but only for circumference because it uses only one radius. Okay, so things like that. Just one variable gets changed. What happens to the answer? Well, if we only change one dimension and we double that one dimension, then that extra times two affects the answer just like that. So if you double one dimension, you double the answer. Okay? So what if we double two dimensions? Like a circle for area. What if we double the radius? Okay? If we double two dimensions, like radius for area, or if we doubled the height and the base, okay, if we double two dimensions, then that means two times two is how it affects the answer. So four times. What if we double three dimensions? Now this has to be volume because that's the only way you have three dimensions. So if we multiply by two, but we multiply three things by two. So that could be all three sides of a cube, for example, or the radius for a sphere, okay? Then that would be doubling everything, but three different dimensions are affected, so we multiply two an extra three times by the answer, which means eight times. The volume is eight times bigger if you double all the dimensions, okay? What about if we have the dimensions. That's what happens when you make one half into a verb. If you have the dimensions, that means you're multiplying by one half or dividing by two, same thing. Okay, so if you do that to just one dimension, then that's one half to the one power times your answer, which means half of your answer. So if you multiply one dimension by one half, then the answer gets cut in half. But if you multiply two dimensions by one half, so if you cut two dimensions in half, then that's going to affect the answer this way. 
one half to the second power, which is one fourth of the answer, all right? And by extension, if we chop three dimensions in half, like if we take a sphere with a radius of eight compared to a sphere with a radius of four, it doesn't just chop the volume in half, it does this, one half to the third power. One half times one half times one half is one eighth. So that new sphere will only have one eighth as much volume. And you can apply this to any number. So you could multiply a dimension by three or by five or by anything. And the same is true. So let's say we multiply two of the dimensions by three. That's like three to the second power. So nine times the answer is the final result. Or if you cubed three different dimensions, that would change the answer by three to the third power, which is 27 times bigger. Now that is a tricky concept. The best way to understand it is to do a lot of examples. And there are some in your homework. So now go try different numbers and try doubling them, try chopping them in half and see what happens to the final answers, and you'll probably understand the pattern a lot more.